Thank you so much for clicking on this video and today I'm going to be putting power steering on my Subaru for the first time in like four years um, and it's going to be electric as well so that'll be pretty interesting. So I've been making some decent progress on the case swap build and uh, the next step in that process is finally putting power steering on this so I'm very excited to do that. I plan on drifting this and having no power steering and trying to drift does not really work out that well. This car isn't that light. I think it'll be a little over 3,000 pounds uh, once it's all finished, said, and done. Uh, so that'll be great to be able to flip a switch and turn the power steering on when I need it. I forgot to bring my camera to the junkyard, so here's some clips I took on my iPhone uh, of me being there. So I just got back and here is the Ford Motor Company electric power steering pump out of a 2008 Volvo C30. But before I get too much farther into this, I'm going to go ahead and uh, wash it off and get all this grime off of the pump and everything. All right, now here it is looking all nice and fresh and clean. I won't get my hands dirty when I'm messing with it anymore, so that'll be nice. And here is the total electric power steering pump. I spent $57.91 on this. There's people trying to sell this exact same pump on eBay for like 200 bucks, but it took me like literally 10 minutes to pull this bitch off and I got it for like a quarter of the price. Pretty sick. But if you're wondering where I plan on putting this, I'm going to tuck it in right here in front of the passenger front wheel and then cut a hole to have the fill go right there, similar to how I did with my washer fluid reservoir. I relocated it from the engine bay to right here and it's held on just fine and I just top off my washer fluid through right there, nice and tucked away. But this pump is pretty beefy and a little bit longer than I expected it to be. But I think we'll still have enough clearance. Um, I'll have to put the whole neck through and have it hang down a little bit. But if you see like the bottom of my subframe and oil pan, I'm going to try to make it level if not a little bit raised. Alright, so here's kind of the position I'm thinking about. It is hanging uh, I don't know, right about even, maybe a little bit lower than the subframe. Um, so I want to get this higher than the subframe at least, and then uh, make the mount. So I circled the lid right where I wanted it to be. Uh, this is the only hole saw I have, and it just so happens to be the perfect size for this. It's a little bit bigger, but that'll be nice. That way I can put some uh, insulation around the hole. But I'm going to go ahead and drill this hole right there and then stick the neck of the power steering pump through there. And just like that, she's all mocked up approximately where she's going to be. Like I said, I'm going to put some rubber tubing around this so it looks a little bit cleaner and so it doesn't scuff up the reservoir for this.
All right, since we got it mounted now, I'm gonna move on to the wiring since I don't have any of the fittings to uh, actually make it work hydraulically. Uh, but this is the sensor plug, I guess you can say. And you can see there's these two wires wrapped up and then this one gray and blue wire. Uh, so these two wrapped up wires you don't need, you can snip them right here. Um, this gray and blue wire right here is the one that's going to actually turn it on. So this is the switch. So if you put this directly to the battery, it would be the pump would stay on 24 seven. So you definitely want to put this to a switch or put this to a 12 volt switch plug. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and uh, cut these two wires shorter. I don't want to cut them all the way just in case. Um, then leave this one long and route this to a 12 volt switch. So this is the high pressure line off my Subaru's rack and pinion and this is the high pressure line off the Volvo power steering pump. I'm going to have to figure out what the thread pitch of both of these are um, and then get an adapter that goes from this to a 6 A in line so that way I can make an A in line connection to connect the high pressure lines and then for the low pressure line um, coming off of the power steering pump, it's just a hose. So I'm just going to put, I'm going to cut this part off the low pressure line off the rack and pinion and just shove a hose over that and extend the hose to go to the return line on that. And then I should be good on fitting. All right. It is the next day. Now I went ahead and picked up everything I needed to finish the wiring, hopefully. And it is currently the winter apocalypse 2022. Uh, the past few days have been nice in the seventies and the sixties, but now it has been below freezing in Houston, Texas for more than 24 hours. So bear with me as I freeze my ass off today. We got frozen bird baths right now. Look at that frozen drips coming from the water and not a lick of insulation on the walls. So my little propane heater is going to be putting in work until I inevitably run out of propane and then every place is sold out of it. So I'm really going to be struggling in here. So don't mind that noise in the background just to get us through this video. But at least my Baja Blast will stay cold while I'm working. But I picked up six gauge wire to attach from the power to the battery. Uh, I'm going to ground this out on the bolt mounting bolts and I got these lugs for that. And then a 100 amp mega fuse. I'm not exactly sure what size fuse to use, but I'm going to go with this. And if it blows it, then I can upgrade that later on. But anyways, let's go ahead and make this thing power up. So here's kind of what I figured out. This is the fuse and I have two bolts in the eyelets. Um, and so I'm going to mount it somewhere here. And yes, I know this is all going to be positive with a lot of current running through it. So I'll, I will be sure to insulate that very well. Uh, but I'll have the power wire off the power steering pump go here and the other wire kind of attach here with this in the middle. Um, that way it's somewhat serviceable. And there we have it, a little ghetto, but functional. Um, I think this will insulate it just fine. Doesn't look the best, but this will all be completely hidden. Uh, so now we just got to run the 12 volt switched wire uh, all the way to a 12 volt switch and make all this new wiring look nice. And just like that, I painstakingly rerouted the lines. You can see the brown wire I added in this loom and the black one I just did uh, below it. And this is the big power wire off the power steering pump. I just kind of have it going to this little bus bar uh, that goes to my battery relocation since I relocated everything. So like this is my uh, starter power wire and everything like that. Um, and that just goes to the battery in the rear. And then you see the brown wire there, poked it through the stock body harness and it comes out right here and uh, I will add it to the switch bar so far. All right, so here is the finished wiring. I added this little fuse box. You can see 12 volt switch. So I have the power um, to this entire fuse box going to a wire off the ignition coil uh, that only gets power when the keys turn. So if we look at the switch panel right now, you can see that this one is not on. So if I do it, nothing happens. But if I do the other ones, 
you can see they get power even though the key is not in because these are coming straight from the battery and this one is coming from the 12 volt switch and this one is going to the gray and blue wire on the power steering pump so you can see it is now brown but whenever i turn the key this one now does get power and if y'all can hear that the power steering pump gets power so if i have it on and take the key out it stops but if i turn the key back on the power steering pump turns back on if i leave it on so that way uh, i can leave the switch on the entire time and then when i take the key out it turns off um, and I don't have to worry about it anymore. All right, so I finally got the fitting in the mail that is going to let me connect the power steering pump to the rack, which is this 14 millimeter by 1.5 Saugnaw adapter to a 6AN. Um, and this is going to go right into the high pressure port on my rack and pinion, going to the high pressure port on the power steering pump. So this guy has a little O-ring on the end and that's going to thread straight into here. So I wanted to route this behind the steering rack and behind the oil pan and the best way was with this U6AN fitting. Uh, so I have this on and now I'll thread it on to the adapter bit. All right, so I have a 7 16 fuel line, not for fuel injection, but uh, it should be able to handle the power steering fluid. And I have that routed under here, and this is the OEM hard return line. Uh, I cut it off about here, yeah, you can see the mark. Um, and then I slid the hose all the way down and hose clamped it there as well. This should be enough to hold the return line pressure. And then I have the high pressure line zip tied up and we can see it protruding right there. So now all that's left to do is fill this thing up with power steering fluid and hope that it holds and works. All right, she is all topped off. So now when I flip the switch, it should work. All right, well, it's letting me turn it and the wheels are up in the air, so I can't really see, but it, let's just check for leaks. Nothing really leaking back there. So now let's go ahead and drop the car on the ground and see if the power steering will work with actual load placed on it. All right, well, pardon the dust. My car has been sitting out here for a while. I got spider webs. My battery voltage is low as well, so it doesn't have full power. But if you can see, I am able to turn the car fairly easily with the pump going and the engine not running. And then whenever I take the key out, see, I lose power to the pump, key back on pump turns back on. I don't have to worry about turning the switch off every single time I get out of my car because I can just leave it on. But anyways guys, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you like this video and it helps y'all out to show you how simple and easy this can be, especially with A in lines. They are life changing for me and this build. Uh, follow my Instagram right here so you can see some behind the scenes stuff that goes on. I have a project that I've been working on alongside while making this video. So my SD card is filled up with two full videos right now. Um, I'll give you all a little sneak peek. Boom, that's all y'all are getting. It is a world's first build. So uh, hopefully I'll get that video uploaded for y'all too. And uh, anyways, guys, like, subscribe, and motherfucking peace.